in Space Watch, NASA is working to put Americans on the moon again by 2024. The Artemis program also aims to establish sustainable exploration by 2028. The eventual goal is to use the lessons learned from the moon program to eventually send astronauts to Mars. So Jim Bridenstine is NASA's administrator. He's at an assembly facility in New Orleans. So listen, what's the timeline for the Armitis program? So we're, we want to launch, um, you know, the first Artemis launch in 2021, but we want to be able to send the next man and the first woman to the South Pole of the Moon by 2024. So we're on an aggressive schedule, and the SLS rocket behind me is the most powerful rocket ever built, uh, and of course, built by NASA with our, 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 our prime contractor, Boeing. And this is the vehicle that's going to take our first, our first woman and our next man to the South Pole of the Moon by 2024. All right, this sounds promising. You've called on Congress to approve more funding for the program, though. Why is it imperative that you get that money? So when we want to lead the world, which is what we do in science and exploration, um, we want to make sure that we're doing big things because our partners around the world are interested in maybe partnering with countries that are not always friendly to the United States if, in fact, we are not leading. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that we're leading the world, we're bringing our international partners with us. But the other thing is we get amazing technologies whenever we explore space. Uh, a lot of people watching this right now are probably watching on DirecTV, Dish Network. Maybe they're watching on the Internet, Internet broadband from space. A lot of people have Internet television. All of these activities were born from this little agency called NASA when it comes to space-based communications back in the 1960s and even in the 1950s before that. Um, but if that's just communications. We talk about GPS and navigation. We talk about predicting weather, how we understand climate. Certainly, um, you know, when we talk about national security and defense, a lot of people don't realize every banking transaction in this country is dependent on a timing signal from GPS. So really basic needs that all of us take advantage of every day um, were developed from space exploration. But there's so much more, and going to the moon sustainably is a long-term goal, not just a long, it's a short-term goal. Um, but we want to make sure that when we go, we lead the entire world. So if you don't get the money, though, is the 2024 deadline still possible? Uh, well, I think Congress has, Congress wants to make sure that they fund the government. Make no mistake, I've talked to members on both sides of the aisle, everybody wants to make sure that we're leading in space. And so that's a very positive thing. Uh, it is true that when there's gridlock, it slows us down and it makes us get more creative. I think there are ways that right now we can keep moving forward, even under a CR, and we're going to explore all of those options. Um, and we're, we're constantly making sure that we're communicating with legislators and letting them know how important it is for us to get appropriations so that we can move forward in the way that we'd like, not in the way that we have to. <laughs> So I think it's really interesting how NASA is working with some private companies. Uh, private companies, including SpaceX and Blue Origin, will have yeah. an opportunity to actually bid on proposals to provide deliveries uh, to the surface of the moon. Very cool. Why is NASA choosing to, to partner with these private companies? What's sort of the long-term goal here? So NASA wants to be one customer of many customers in a robust commercial marketplace in space. We also want to have numerous providers that are competing against each other on cost and innovation. That drives down cost and it increases access. In some areas, the government is going to have to lead because there is not a commercial marketplace. But when it comes to delivery of cargo to the moon, when it comes to access to low Earth orbit, these are activities where we can take advantage of commercial capabilities and NASA can, instead of purchase, own, and operate, we can be the customer. Um, and I think that's good for the American economy. And in fact, it leads exports for the United States of America. We want space to be an export, which it already is, but we want that export to grow. A lot of people are familiar with the balance of payments challenge that we have, the trade deficit. Well, aeronautics and space are very positive developments. We have a trade surplus in these activities because NASA has led. Part of the Artemis program includes the goal of sending the first American woman to the moon. Why is that an important part of the program? Well, I think it's inspirational. When we went in the 1960s, all of our astronauts came from fighter pilot backgrounds and test pilot backgrounds, and there were no opportunities for women in those days. Well, today, we have a very diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps that includes women. We call the program Artemis 
named after the twin sister of Apollo, and she was the goddess of the moon. And the person most excited about this, of course, is my 11-year-old daughter. And I want her to see herself as having every opportunity I saw myself as having when I was growing up. So I think this is inspirational. And when we go to the moon this time, we go with all of America. We go sustainably, we learn how to live and work on another world, and we take that knowledge onto Mars. I love it. Jim Bridenstine, thank you very much.